While it is the nation's capital, Washington, D.C. may just be one of the worst areas you could ever imagine to move to. You think I'm joking? Well, today you're going to find out about the many reasons why you should avoid D.C. altogether and instead uproot yourself to almost anywhere else on the East Coast, or within the country for that matter. Now, we're not saying that D.C. is the worst place in the world, but we're just suggesting that you take our list into consideration before making a decision that you will very likely wind up regretting. Don't get us wrong, there are some really fun things to do and see in D.C., but you do have to take the bad with the good, and just like your last relationship, you can't kid yourself forever about how bad it really was. In this video, we're going to go over the top 10 reasons you shouldn't move to Washington, D.C. The traffic. Traffic will inevitably pop up on most top 10 lists when it comes to moving to a big city. But in DC's case, it is here and it's real. The most metropolitan areas of the city are truly brutal when you're looking to get to work or home. In fact, the average commute in DC is about 45 minutes, with the national average only being 25. Public transportation options are scarce and underutilized, contributing to their overall decline in poor state. Unless you plan on living near your job, which, hey, you just might, the traffic issues alone are enough to make your head spin. But don't plan on getting to that elsewhere place anytime soon, because the traffic is just that bad. Too much stress. If you're living in D.C., you're likely doing something government-related, even if you're not. Stress literally lives in the air down here. Seriously. Walk around the streets or even try to pop into a coffee shop in D.C., I'd be willing to bet you'll sense something strange in the air. It can be such a problem that you'll likely find yourself trying to figure out if it's you or everyone else around you that's feeling stressed. Now, that's not to say that you can't enjoy yourself and have a stress-free life, but I'd be willing to wager that stress correlates to proximity to the nation's capital, and those living in the Maryland suburbs are probably experiencing a bit less of it than you'd be. Difficulty meeting people. Part of moving to a larger city is having access to many types of people that you can potentially meet friends with. While not impossible to meet friends in D.C. per se, most people are actively sacrificing their work along with social time to devote extra hours to their job and advancing their career. D.C. is one of the busiest cities in the world, with many important people and jobs converging in one small metropolitan area. If you live down here, don't be surprised if people don't simply have the time to make small talk. Housing issues. Like most big cities, finding decent housing is a chore. A lot of people stay out of the city and end up opting for surrounding suburbs with a bit longer of a commute for that exact reason. There's just simply not enough decent abodes for the demand, and unless you got some serious coin, finding a livable house or an apartment, which won't kill you on the inside, is going to take some serious searching. The weather. This could truthfully fall into a pro or con list, depending on who you are. But DC weather is rather unpredictable as it's a four season type of area geographically. When you get into those winterish, springy type months like March and April, you just never know if you're going to get breezy weather in the 70s or a foot of snow by the afternoon. That type of unpredictability just can't be great when you're trying to get acclimated to everything else in the city. Not knowing what type of weather to expect can also affect your commute times, attire, and overall attitude throughout the day. You feel inadequate. Okay, so maybe moving to DC isn't what is going to cause you to feel inadequate. But the thing is, there is just so many incredibly rich and smart people openly roaming around that it would easily all of a sudden feel a little bit less grateful for the life that you're leading. I mean, the president, a member of Congress, and a plethora of other world leaders are in and around the city at any given time. Now, you're not going to get anywhere near most of those people, but the very presence of the world's most elite is going to make you second guess your life choices. It's not what you think it is. If you're anything like us, you've grown up with this super idealized version of what DC is. Whether it's from the movies or television shows, you can't really help but have this vision of the nation's capital in your mind that features suits and ties and important conversations, as well as meetings taking place at every corner. Even the constant excitement of foiled terrorist plots that most shows feature might seem like something to get excited about. Well, that's just not the case. You might see some Congress people here and there or an ambassador out and about, but that's pretty much it. 
and you're not going to phone up your friends to tell them because you don't have any of them any longer because you moved away from them to live a life of solitude in D.C. Tourism. As a potential transplant, you really don't have a right to complain about the tourist situation, but you will definitely find out that D.C. is one of the most traveled tourist destinations in the world, and with good reason. There are plenty of museums, historical landmarks, and multiple other fascinating sites which are definitely worth seeing. And the sheer idea of all the industry around the capital is enough to pull people in from far and wide so that they can at least say they've been to D.C. before they die. I do recommend to see D.C. if you haven't, but you don't need to call it home. The D.C. lifestyle will put a drain on your wallet, you'll have to deal with clueless people milling around with no idea where they're headed, and you're probably just trying to get to work on time. The Crime Rate Relative to other urban areas, the crime rate in the nation's capital is not so ridiculous, but when we're talking about the place the president calls home, you would think that D.C. would be faring a little bit better in the category. D.C. just recently had its highest murder rate in 15 years, not a statistic that anyone wants to brag about, mind you. Granted, the crime rates aren't exactly what they used to be in the 80s or 90s, but if you're still intent on moving to the nation's capital, remember that the city as a whole isn't some protected and gated government community that's free of gang-related shootings or robbery. Cost of Living Simply put, living in D.C. is going to cost you, and quite a bit. We've already talked about the housing situation, which will not only drive you insane, but drain your wallet too. The average median house price in D.C. is more than double the national average at just under $600,000. And the overall cost of living does nothing than other than support the notion that you're going to be struggling to get by, unless you're into the mid to six-figure salary. The cost of living in D.C. is about 50% higher than the rest of the nation on average. While overall healthcare costs are slightly lower, transportation costs are considerably higher, and you'll be finding yourself paying a bit more money for almost everything else. 